Hello and welcome. Today's video is a bit different to my usual devlogs. Today I'm covering game development for beginners. I'm going to be going through the process of going from this to this. Whether you're a gamer yourself interested in making one or an artist who's interested in branching out, it doesn't matter because I'll take you through from square one. So before we start, I'll just explain a bit more about what makes up games. To really simplify things, there are four main aspects to a game when making them. They are scenes and cameras, code, nodes, and assets. Scenes and cameras are the way the player will see your world that you create. You can manipulate the camera to follow the player around, or you can change scenes to go onto the next level or switch menus. The code is the way you can add logic and mechanics to your game. This is the main part of most games, and it doesn't even have to be written as you'll see later. Code basically dictates the rules of your game. Nodes are a basic skeleton which contain information and several links to other nodes. Nodes can be used to represent a tree-like structure and are often represented as parents, children and siblings. Assets are basically the skin you put over everything else. If you're an artist, then this will be by far your favourite part of creating a game. These assets can be a 2D image or can be a 3D mesh made in a program like Blender. Assets give a personality and breathe life into a game. I've seen too many people who say, let's make a game. They pick the engine, learn the code, and quit after two weeks. This is because these types of people, they choose a game engine and dream of making the games they like to play. Unfortunately, this is unrealistic because oftentimes the companies that make those games have hundreds of staff working at a time and they also have hundreds of thousands of dollars backing the development of that game. As a beginner or even indie developer, you need to reduce the scope and try to make a game that's just fun. Don't expect to make the next Red Dead Redemption or GTA. One last thing before we go into the steps of how to get started in game dev is don't get discouraged. If your first project is a simple platformer with basic assets and unrealistic movement, be proud of that. Most people don't even get to the stage you got to, so play it and show it to your friends and don't worry when they're critical of it or expect something more because they'll be thinking of the terms of big budget AAA games that they're used to playing and they don't know the time it took for you to get to that point. Now let's get into the main steps you need to follow in order to get started in game dev. It might seem intimidating when you see people making code like this and it looks all too confusing. Don't worry, you'll get there too, I promise, it just requires practice. The first step in your journey is picking a game engine. This step is fairly important because it will mean that you'll learn and memorize the functions and language that is unique to only that engine. Saying this, there isn't necessarily a good or bad engine, but among the most popular are Unity, Godot, which is the one I use, and Unreal Engine. Unity is the most popular engine and you need to know C Sharp to program in it. Godot uses a similar structure to Unity, but it has its own language called GDScript, which is basically just Python. And finally, Unreal Engine uses a blueprint model, so you don't even have to know any programming languages. If you already know C Sharp, I'd recommend choosing Unity, or if you already know Python, I'd recommend choosing Godot. Unity has a real-time scene viewer, which means the changes that you make in the editor, you can see as a real-time effect in the screen. Godot does not have this. You have to run the project to see the changes that you make in code or in the editor. So Unity is slightly better in that term, but I'd say Godot is more beginner-friendly because of its intuitive GUI and the fact that most beginner programmers will learn Python. Unreal Engine has some pros too, which is that the graphics quality is easy to work with and customizable. And it's in high demand due to many people not knowing a programming language, but wanting to make a game. The user interface in this one is the best out of the three here too. Once you've chosen your engine, the next thing to do is, if you haven't already, learn the language. For Unreal Engine, you don't really need to do this, but for the other two, you do. If you already know about lists, dictionaries, using functions and modules, variables, and the basics, you can progress to the next step. This is also recommended for Unreal Engine because this is basically the logic they'll use. If you're stuck on where to start, you can learn how to code, which is as simple as going on the multitude of free code learning sites like Grok and Khan Academy, or watching some YouTube tutorials specific to that language. 
Once you learn the basics for that language, I consider watching an engine based tutorial of making your first game. Look for a tutorial or a tutorial series that looks interesting and stick with it. Also make sure your engine version matches the version in that video. Since some things they may do in the tutorial from say 3 years ago may not even exist in your version of the game engine that you're running. If you don't like that certain series, that's okay, just switch early on to a different one. These tutorials will walk you through step by step and complete your first project. Channels like GD Quest, which specialise in Godot, do this really well. And also don't choose the making a game in 10 minutes videos, because they often brush past or skip entirely key elements of making a game. These videos aren't for beginners making their first project, this is for later on when you forget how to make a player or certain other steps. A bonus tip I'd recommend for those who want to develop their skills faster and more effectively is to try coding something on your own that's related to, but slightly more complex than what the tutorial did. For example, if in the tutorial they added a basic player movement, try smoothing the player movement yourself using things like acceleration and friction. This is a pretty easy to do method and it will help you build a wider toolkit for when you're ready to work on your own. After creating your first game, you'll pick up a new skill specific to game dev, and you'll find out what you like and what you dislike in game dev. After your first project with a walkthrough, I'd recommend you make your own game or continue to work on the game that you made in the previous step, and get creative with it too. Try experimenting in 3D maybe, or try implementing shaders or more complex things. Don't rely on one single tutorial though, you should only search things up if you're really stuck and don't know what to do. Try to remember things from your first game and apply that learning into this one. So you've finished choosing your engine, learning the language, and making your first couple games. Most people think that your learning finishes here, and you move on to making games flawlessly. But let's be honest, no one's going to make perfect games off the bat. In fact, your learning just starts here. You'll learn so much more just seeing others code something and learn new ways to do things more effectively in your code. And there you have it, a solid roadmap for your journey into game development. Remember, everyone starts somewhere, and the key is perseverance and continuous learning. Whether you're choosing Unity, Godot, or Unreal Engine, each step you take brings you closer to your dream of creating games. Thanks again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing, and I'll see you later. Bye.